You are watching Profile, success stories of ordinary people just like you and me. Thank you for watching. I'm Robbie, and our next guest is a singer-songwriter and an actress, and she's here to share with us her story, her success, her journey, and her lifestyle, and the ways in which she's giving back to her communities. Help me welcome Gina Williams. Gina Williams, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Guys. How are you doing today, by the you way? You know, I can't complain, Robbie. Thanks for having me on your show. Awesome. Things are great. Nice, nice. No, I checked, checked your story. Okay. It's, it's never ending. You are an award winner, singer, songwriter. You play the pianist. You are a composer. You're an actress. The list goes on. And not only that, as an actress, I've found out that you've been in, a, in many shows from in the 90s. That's yes, that is true. Nice. I'm sure you're going to tell us about it. But talk to me, where does this all started? Uh, my parents are Jamaican. So, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yes, they, they uh, left the life of coconut and plantain and... Uh -huh. Bammy and saltfish and came yeah. to Alberta where we have beer, beef and babes, <laughs> which we don't do any of those. <laughs> right? Were you born in Jamaica? No! no, no <laughs> I was born not here. born in Jamaica. I was born in the beautiful icy flatlands of Alberta, Edmonton. Life was normal for you growing up in Alberta, going to school, Probably thinking of becoming a doctor or something. What were you? What was your plan? Oof. I toyed with the idea of being a veterinarian. Okay. A lot of people toyed with that. Um, I, I did like animals a lot. I also toyed with the idea, not so much toyed, later on with um, mm -hmm. being a lawyer. I want to be a family lawyer. Right. Um, but I, I realized I wasn't interested in divorces as much as bringing people together. So I said, law is not what I want to do. I should be a therapist. Mm -hmm. But then I couldn't say the male anatomy at the time. I was too shy. So sex therapy wasn't in the cards. So music was always there yeah. from the beginning. It's almost like... It's a safe zone. <laughs> it's a, yeah, you know, well said, Robbie. For me, it's it's been like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We would sing as a family, mm -hmm. you know, once a week on, on Friday evenings, you know, just, nice. you know, s singing spiritual songs and all that. Right. It's great. Yes. And um, so how I got into acting basically was a continuation of that. Okay. Um, there was a newspaper article in, um, um, in Edmonton and it had said, you know, mm -hmm. vocal competition, you know, all that kind of thing. And, um, and it, listed what kind of styles and I I was like okay I can do this style. I can do the pop I can do all that you know when you're young yeah, you know you just yeah, yeah. I uh, looked at it and sure enough next week in the paper it said all styles like the, the hair on the back of my neck stood up I'm like okay this must be a sign from my god yeah. so to make the long story short I ended up winning the competition what is I did that, that was my First, yeah, my breakthrough as, yeah. as a singer at that point. Go what ahead, was you. this? This was somewhere in the 90s, I early would say. 90s. Early 90s. Early yes. 90s. Um, or mid, because I'm not that old. But I mean, <laughs> some, somewhere in the 90s. And I won a part, one of the prizes was a uh, demo uh, award to do three song demo. And the other thing was to take acting lessons with great West Canadian talent. Okay. And that's how I got involved in acting. Tell us about those three songs. Oh, so the three songs um, were Take the Car, mm -hmm. Fly on Your Wall, mm -hmm. and I believe, I, yeah, I Want Peace Now. I performed Take the Car, you know, with a, you know, get some guys together. And I performed at some of the um, functions that I was invited to perform mm -hmm. at. But being known mainly as a gospel artist. artist, people really didn't know what to do with me. So I left. Okay. I left Alberta. Oh, and where did you go? I went to BC. BC. Right here. Nice. Before that happened, what path were you on? Music. Oh, baby. Music. Yeah. Music, music, music. To be more... Um, specific. Specific, yeah. Uh -huh. I was performing mainly gospel. Um, in uh -huh. Edmonton, that's what I was 
known mainly for. Yeah. My big song was The Anchor Holds. It wasn't my song, it was a Ray Bolt song mm -hmm. um, that he made famous. And I sang that e everywhere, every concert. So gospel was, we had a big black community uh -huh. in Alberta and uh, with a lot of us, gospel, you know, mm -hmm. reggae and gospel. <laughs> So somewhere in there, you're gonna find black people. So Definitely. yeah, it was in, or or gospel reggae. Yeah. So it was you know I did more of the what you would call um, the genre would be um, country gospel. I find that a lot That's of Jamaicans like country gospel. Yeah, I didn't really pick up on that until this year. It was country gospel is a thing. pretty yeah, it's a thing. You know the Gaithers the. Jamaicans like this a lot. So, yes. so um, anyway, so I sang a lot of songs that came from those traditions, and I mean, I love them. I still love them. And uh, you also said that you got a contract to do um, acting school. Mm -hmm. How was that? What did that do for you? So um, the acting school, Great West Canadian Talent. Um, Bill Davidson, Bill William Davidson, is mm -hmm. is a, as far as I'm concerned, great actor himself. Mm -hmm. And um, he felt my acting was okay, and I'm being really generous. And I, I thought that's fine. I don't plan to be an actor anyway, so it really okay. didn't matter to me. Okay. Um, when I booked the Jack Bull, I was terrified. Like I remember waking up in the hotel thinking, any moment now they're going to find out I'm not an actor, like I'm not a real one. Yeah. Tell us about this. What role did you get? And tell us about it. What well, was the experience like? Well, you know, uh, big kudos to John Cusack because I, I auditioned as the servant in the movie. Oh. Months later, when I booked it, I was no longer the servant. Um, Johnny had wanted to change the perception of, of, you know, black people always being the servant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they rewrote my role to be the, the good Samaritan of the town. Did it create any opportunity afterwards? Um, yeah, in the sense that, um, I mean, I didn't get fired for being a fake actor. So <laughs> I, I continued acting and um, here we are today. And, nice. and um, I, I, it's, it's been a blessing for sure. And it, it seems like you enjoyed it because you went back to school to improve I, your skills. Yes, I did. Um, I mean, I felt, I felt that I was lacking as an actor when I was in Edmonton and I, I wanted to go to a school to, and not to say my training there was terrible, but I, I wanted to say thank you to the film world mm -hmm. for hiring me, mm -hmm. you know, to speak. So I thought the best I could do was show my respects to this side of the industry by taking the craft more seriously and, and actually getting trained. Tell us some of the movies, your, movies and television show you have been in. Okay, so Riverdale, mm -hmm. um, Minority Report, the show. I was in White Coats. I was in Rogue. Rogue. Yeah. I was in um, Untold Stories of the ER. I've been in so many seasons of that show. Nice. They, I would say that they help keep, you know, the acting chops, you know, uh, yeah. and the and the crafty. So good. Like the food is just all of the shows I've been on. The people and the food are out, just outstanding. Amazing. I've been on um, one of the biggest shows, I would say, in terms of my role. The, one of the biggest ones was Proof, starring Jennifer Beals. And um, I was a Kenyan ambassador on that show. You were, you're a pianist? Mm -hmm. How did you get into that? Two things. I used to go around and pretend I was playing the piano. I do it on her bed head. I would do it in church. Like I was always pretending to play the piano. Along with that, there are two things I would do. I wear out my church shoes, mm -hmm. trying to do ballet. Mm -hmm. I pretend I was playing the piano, but I wanted to sing. Out of right. everything, singing was like this is what I want to do, and I had my reasons for that. Mm -hmm. So my mom put me in piano. She said, "Do you want piano?" I said, "Sure." So that's the rest of history. Orchestra. Tell us about that. Okay, so while I was working on my master's degree um, as a concert pianist, 
-hmm. I did just so for viewers who may be into classical music, mm -hmm. I did a PhD program at a master's level while I was at university, University of Alberta. Mm -hmm. um, I took a course, an introductory course um, in orchestration. Right. The real person, if I can take a little extra time and, and, and explain to you, the real person who took me behind the scenes and taught me what it meant to orchestrate for classical orchestra, not symphony orchestra, classical orchestra, was Dr. Malcolm Forsyth. Mm -hmm. He was a six time, if I have it right, multi Juno award winner. And if you don't know the Juno, I mean, we're in Canada, mm -hmm. Juno's are our version of the Grammys, right? And um, he took me under his wing one summer and said, I will show you, Georgina, how to compose for classical orchestra. And um, in his thick South African accent, and he taught me, you know, and uh, he was very proud of being African. He teased me all the time about how not African I am. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was quite the Quite yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. You were playing a song for me earlier. Yes. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank Love you. It. Love it. I thought it was. She she tricked me for a bit. Let me yes. think. It was a Jamaican artist. And then she popped the surprise. It's me. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> stuff I write, mm -hmm. that's all legit. I wrote all that by hand. Nice. I wrote using using the computer by 2016, but everything before, I used to sit on the bus and write orchestral music out of my head. Wow. I didn't, what we didn't talk about, so I hear finished music from God. Finished. Finished scores, finished song, like what you heard, finished, boom. And you just kind of go, <laughs> and like wow cool you know it's like yeah. turning on a radio and you just hear things yeah. so and I don't know when I don't know how I don't and one of the reasons why I've done all the genres the way I have to is cause some people are like well why don't you just give it away to people I said I could I could give it away to like say pardon me mm -hmm. sure and make a whole lot of money or if I do it and people are like where's this coming from at least I can say hey, you know for me it's like it's a testament of something yes. beyond me I'm just the humble scribe, <laughs> you know, yeah, and and, yeah. and I feel honored to be that scribe. I really do, especially with the rock music, because rock gets such a bad rap, and rock to me is the music of pain. That deep pain, rock and hip hop, so much pain, especially our millennials feel. Rock. People don't get that. Yeah, rock is with the beats and hip hop with this, with the words. With the words, yes. <laughs> I'm oh, and and people like and, and if people can really, and I'm talking about the other the judgmentals, if they understand where that heart is coming from, mm -hmm. then people can heal from that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it doesn't mean you don't have those stories. It doesn't mean you forget your past somehow. Because mm -hmm. that past is gonna be part of you. But but certain elements will be dead. Somehow, somewhere, I'm driven to let people know around the world, mm -hmm. I see you, mm -hmm. I get you, I feel you. Mm -hmm. Your story resonates with me too. And that there's nobody, nobody I can't sit down and listen to and be touched by, and I want to give this back to you through my art. To, to achieve so much, I'm sure there are a lot of challenges along the way. Oh yeah, you don't have a social life. I'm surprised I'm even married. I mean, it's like you just don't. But how do you find balance though in your life? Once a week, I take time to pull out of Gina Williams. Okay. From Friday night to Saturday night, I don't know who she is. I really don't. So that's the time I really dial into other people. I call people. Um, you know, I, I, it's just the one time I don't think <laughs> anything to do with my business and all that. It's really nice. Um, yes. Go for walks in the park, get my praise on, all <laughs> that. You know, it's just, it's a time where I just 
I'm not having to think about myself. So Otherwise. that's yeah. So I, so yes, I, I don't have much time, but I do that for sure once a week.、Um, like I mentioned, when, and、um, I'm pretty committed to that because if you're so self-consumed with your business, I don't think this is the healthiest way to be. People always tend to. Give back to support others.、Mm -hmm. You know, have you been involved in any any form of community service? Community service?、Uh, yeah, organization. No, they just send me to prison. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs>、yeah. You know what I'm saying? Community、mm -hmm. service with prison. Right. No,、um, <laughs> I have been mainly involved, and I and I am toying with the idea of going on site one of these days. I'm a big supporter of. Adra, I give money back to spiritual organizations. So, AKA tithe, I tithe. I'm one of those.、Um, we double tithe, so we give more than 10% of our income. We take, we give back anywhere between 20 and 30%. I do 20%. All of the concerts and album sales, all of that is actually a portion of that is given back. I don't keep all that money and. <clears throat> A portion of that, anybody who buys any of my albums, a portion of that goes to a charity. The reason why I love Adra so much, they give, they have a very low overhead. Most people never heard of them because,、mm -hmm. again, they don't really advertise. Not to knock, you know, the other、Those、ones who, yeah. yeah, you know, if you're given, you're given, and I, I respect that. Adra gives back、uh, somewhere about ninety six point seven percent. Of the dollars they actually get from people, so they keep the other percentage, which is quite low、yeah. for an organization. So, and they go on site, and and and、oh. actually help. So,、um, a lot of my money、uh, goes toward Adra. What drives you to do that? Why why、oh. more than ten percent? Why do you give back so much? I be I do believe there's. You know, a loving being out there. I mean, it doesn't always feel like it, but there. You know, <laughs> I believe this somehow. And instead of just doing what everybody does in those circles, I'm like, you know, if I were to give you a tip, how would that go over? You know, that kind of thing. It's, I'm a little bit of a rebel. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But but I'm sure those organizations appreciate your your support. As a matter of fact, they did reach out and.、Um, They took me out for dinner, which was a huge surprise.、Mm -hmm. You know,、yes. don't worry, it wasn't you know major posh thing. You know, the money still went to, <laughs> to、yeah. help people, but、yeah. just to say thank you for my my consistent support. So amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, it touched my heart. Oh, I should explain. I produce my own concerts. Nice. The largest concert I produced was、um, called the Dare, and that was at the Bell Center,、mm -hmm. Surrey.、Uh, A Bell Center Performing Arts Center, and that was actually all genres in one night. Nice. It was a two-hour concert. I produced it. It was a sixty-five person cast, for lack of a better term. So it was choir, dancers, band, and、nice. orchestra, and try to highlight other artists, especially artists who are over the age of forty. Not to be discriminatory to people who are under forty, but I find that a lot of people. Um, it's like in in our business, it's changing kind of now. Thank God, because you know millennials and post millennials don't really care. They just like music. Thank God, because that's how I am too. But back in the day, it was like if you reach a certain age, you're like it's over. Like just go have babies and be done with it. So I would always look, keep an eye out for artists who were performing who were over forty to give them a chance to be seen, be heard at you know at what they're doing, and hopefully someone will. Ask them to perform in different places, and that. Would you say you have achieved, you know, everything that you have set out to achieve? Yes, AKA, if I got hit by a bus on my way home, would I be like, oh no? <laughs> yes, I'm happy with what I've achieved.、Mm -hmm. um, when I put out Olympia, the choral orchestral album,、mm -hmm. and and some of the press, I remember reading one of them. I said, okay, I can die now. <laughs> you know, it was—it was just.、Nice. I felt so. For me, to sum up my accomplishments is, if my art 
has touched your life in a meaningful way, then I have succeeded. For me, this has been the apex of success in my eyes. And that is good because we all want to get to this point where we feel accomplished. When we, you know, and then we can relax, stop stressing ourselves, yeah. stop chasing, stop all those things because we're good. We're good where we're at. You said it right, Robbie. I've always said everyone has genius potential. I believe that most people are actually born geniuses, but have bought into the idea that they're stupid because of this person or that person said they aren't that. And if you believe it, like growing up being called nigger was terrible. But what was more terrible is when I believed I was. And I did believe I was for a good portion of my life. And when you when you realize that you're not the N-word, don't mean to be offensive, um, when you do realize that you have a purpose, then things start to change. We have to define, Robbie, what success means to us on an individual term and, and not correct. compare comparison skill it yes it's okay to check on your competitors and see what people are doing to grow you know but if we start to look at our numbers and their numbers or this or that when we compare it kills creativity it starts to stifle it because what we all have sometimes is it's so intrinsically unique people don't always catch on right away but when they do god willing when they do it's like boom we've never seen this before do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So what's next for you? If I can indulge you a little bit. When George Floyd died, and I, it affected, his death affected so many people. Mm -hmm. People of all walks and, and, and political persuasions. Everybody was affected by this. And that touched my heart. Mm -hmm. That somehow, even though we've become so cold and callous as a society, that, that people could still be hurt when people are hurting. And I do hope that we will continue to want to see more, I don't, I don't want to say justice because it's cliche, but more empathy and understanding and respect and working things out as a human race. No, I don't think we'll get it perfect because of egos and money and this and that, I get that. But if we could do our small part, it will make a world of a difference. A pebble in a, in a stream still has a ripple effect. It doesn't matter. A ripple effect in physics is still a ripple effect, sure. you know? Sure. And and so I believe in this. I believe in this kind of physics. And, and so what I'm doing now, actually when he died, something clicked mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. When he died, I became alive, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I'm doing this wrong. My, I'm, I've been trying to fit into what I think everybody needed me to be, you know, and, you know, just a pop artist or just a pianist or just a, because we were all taught be in a label. Nothing wrong with labels if that's what you like, but I couldn't be signed to a traditional label because I couldn't be labeled. I know what you mean. Something, something clicked and I went, I need to emerge as myself. I'm all of the above. I am right. not one genre. I don't speak one language. I really do feel everybody's stuff. I, I, I just do. I always have, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So let me not just emerge as me. So I started um, a YouTube channel just to highlight some of the songs that are going to be coming out in the new year and to help get us through this, because I knew this whole thing would surge up again. So I wanted, you know, just a little shot of sunshine, you know, in the genre that you're comfortable with, or all of them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Another galaxy. Um, I 
also just I'm releasing it tomorrow, the next day. It's my favorite genre of music. The favorite genre is music. Right. So when people ask you, what's your favorite genre? Music. That's it. And you know, if you, and I can see anybody of any political persuasion, any、um, religious or non-religious, you know what I mean, wearing that, saying, "Hey, I love music." I love to connect. That's what it really means.、Right. I love to connect, and、um, that's that's the basics basis of love,、yes. true love for each other. Being able to hear someone, it's better to seek to understand、mm-hmm. before being understood. Where can people get to buy your album, check out your music, your movies? Uh, people can hear snippets of my music on my website on the music page. So that would be ginawilliams.com. Right. These five albums coming out,、uh, ranging、uh, from EDM, Caribbean, inspirational CCM, rock, classical, solo classical music.、Yeah. So when you're doing either ballet or relaxing, like it's there, it's they're so different. Those will be coming out、um, well, well for pre-sale, and.、Uh, That will be on a subsection my website with the my favorite genre is is music, shirts as well. Any message do you have for people, especially young people、yeah. growing up who is trying to find themselves to find that identity? You know, in this time day and age, people are so bombarded with with you know different form of information. People, you know, approval is the biggest thing. Oh、now. gosh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's your message to these people? How do they find themselves, and how do they stay on on track to achieve their goal? You know, and not get caught. Well, you've got to pull back from time to time and take time for personal self-reflection. And even if you don't know who you are and you don't know what you want to do in school, that's okay. And to be actually okay with the fact you don't know.、Mm-hmm. There are a lot of adults that don't know. Not everybody had the kind of clarity I had at age six of what I was going to be in life. I already knew, but not everybody has that clarity, and that's okay. And support as well, not just clarity, but that support. Exactly.、Yeah. Exactly. And wherever you're at,、mm-hmm. do the best you can with what you've got, with where you're at. Yes. It's your work ethic, your attitude, all of that that adds up to the successes. That you will continue to achieve later. Success is how well you did what you did.、Mm-hmm. Now,、mm-hmm. that will carry on for the rest of your life. You have a wonderful story, beautiful story, and I know there's a lot more to share. And so we may have to do continue the show another time. Bring you back on set, and I'm not that far. <laughs> of course not. But I enjoy your story. I, you. I know your story will influence some people, impact lives, and a lot of people will appreciate what you have said here today. So I want to say thank you, lots. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Big up, Robin. Yes. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. It was a pleasure. See you next time. Hi, I'm Gina Williams, and you're watching Profile Your Success, Your Story. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! See that? Ah. <laughs>